Amen, amen, and those of you who haven't got it yet, so I'm going to get mine. In your best be buddy, say, I'm going to get mine. I'm going to get mine, amen? Amen, amen. So today I will be starting a series titled, What's Next? I, God gave me this What's Next because I know that each and every one of us with everything that's going on, some of us are wondering, Lord, what's next? What's next? Some of us, in, now I take that back, all of us in some area of our lives are wondering what's next. Whether that's financially, whether that's in our marriages, whether that's in relationships, whether that's in life, period, we are wondering what's next. What's next? And today my mission is to give you a little bit of freedom in that. What's next? What's next? 24 hours in a day, 1,440 minutes, 86,400 seconds in a day. And each and every one of those seconds, minutes, and hours, at some point in there, we want to what's next. Lord, what's next? what are you going to do next? Lord, what's going to happen this year in this? Lord, what's the next move for me in my business, in my marriage, in my life, in my job? In some area, we are wondering, Lord, what's next? What's next? Some of us are wondering what's next because we just catching all kind of stuff right now. We're wondering, Lord, what's next? Some of us are in a good place and we're still, and we're wondering, Lord, what's next? Some of us are just, just wondering what's next, period. Like, Lord, what's going on? What's next? What's next? So let me get right through it. Let me give you some Bible. Psalms 37. I've been reading Psalms 37. Verses 23 and 24. And you see the Lord if you want to go to Mark 4 and 2. I'll be reading that as well. So Psalm 37. 23, verses 23 and 24. And this is the New King James Version. It says, The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his way. It says, The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his way. A lot of times we, we, we quote that and we stop right there. But I love what verse number 24 says. It says, though he fall, that's a blessing, that's a shock moment for somebody right there because the Lord just saved you right there. Because if we, we, if we just stop at verse number 23, then we are disqualified. Let me tell you why, because the Bible says in Mark 10, 18, it, uh, it says the rich young ruler comes to Jesus and said, Master, Master, good person, good man, what must I do to be saved? And Jesus replied to him and said, there is not a one less good except for God alone. So if we stop at verse number 23, AC, you are disqualified, I'm disqualified, Pastor Trish, you even disqualified, I'm sorry to tell you. But he goes on to verse number 24, and he saves a wretch like me and says this, Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholds him with his hand. So some of y'all thought y'all just got disqualified from the game. The coach is telling you, get back in the game, get back in the game. You are still qualified for the promise. Come on. I want to read the Amplified Version as well because, again, I just told you that Jesus said there is none good except for God alone. The Amplified, Amplified Version, we have that. Psalm 37, 23 and 24. Amplified says this is the steps of a good and righteous man are directed, directed and established by the Lord, and he delights in his way. Simply mean that if the Lord delights in your way, that simply means he's pleased with something you're doing. He's pleased with what you're saying. He said he blesses that way. And it goes on to say, when he falls, let me, let me talk that real quick. He didn't say, if. All right, all right, all right. And so they say, if, 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 if Pastor B falls, it is, it is, it is, Martha, it is, 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 it
keep on. Signify that it's, it's going to happen. It's coming. It is going to happen. It says, but he, he will not be hurled down because the Lord is the one who holds his hand and sustains him. The Lord holds his hand and sustains him. So that, that's not a perfect one meeting that each and every one of us is sitting there here right now that it's going to become a point in time where we're going to miss the mark. You know, that's what sin is. Sin is when you miss the mark. And some of us and listen, let me, let me throw this thing out there. That is not a get out of here at this point. Don't walk out this door for a pack of people and go pay up our feet. Now it says we're going to do it. All right, all right. We're going to do it. Right. But it says that when you do it, it says that he will not, you will not be hurled down, but he will uphold you with his mighty hand. And that's what that word um, righteous means. Righteous simply means that righteous simply means that you are just or right. Simply meant that a man or woman that is trusting in the Lord, all of us, we, we, we're Christians, we believe in God, we trust God, but yet still we're going to miss it sometimes. If I have to use this example right here, let me tell you what right is mean. Right simply means that if I have to go to court, if you have to go to court about something that, that, that you've been charged for a crime, if the jury finds you not guilty, that meant that you have been put back in the right standing with the community. You have been put back in the right standing with the law. Meaning now that you are just and you are right in the eyes of the law. And so when we receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we were once sinners, but now we're saved by grace. So we were once enemies of God before we met Jesus. But once we met Jesus, the Bible declares that now when, Jesus, when God sees us, he don't see your sins coming. He don't see your transgressions coming. The only thing he sees is the blood of Jesus. So now when he looks upon us, he says that now they are just. Now they are back in the right standing with me. You know, Here, here, here's, here's the challenge with this. The challenge with this is with this is that a perfect righteousness is not possible for man to attain on his own. It's too high of a standard to meet. The good news is true righteousness is possible for mankind. But it's only through the cleansing and the blood of Jesus Christ. So the Bible declares in 2 Corinthians 5, verses 21, that he that we may see was made to be sin, so that in him we may become the righteousness of God. So what does that mean? That means that Jesus died of death that he did not deserve to pay, but a debt that we could not pay, and he stripped himself of righteousness to close our unrighteousness. I'm going to say that one more time. He stripped off his righteousness to close our unrighteousness, because we were born from righteousness. But Jesus took out his life to close our unrighteousness. Amen? Amen. 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 So what's next? What's next? Let me let me let me say this. Let me go to Mark 4. Mark 4. Mark 4. Mark 4 says this, and this is the NIV verse. This says he taught them many things by parables. And it says, in his teaching, and his te and in his teaching said, listen, a farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places, where they did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plant was scorched, and they withered because they had no root. Verse 7. It says, Other fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants so that they did not bear grain. Verse 8. Still other seed fell on good soil. It came up, grew, and produced a crop. Some multiplied 30, some 60. 
all a hundred times. Jesus said, whoever has ears to hear, let them hear. So what I read to you was, this is the parable of the sower, and it talks about four different types of sower. And it talks about how seed was sown on those four different types of soil. And I love this is simply because it is, is that we often wonder what's next. What's next depends on what you're doing now. What's next depends on what you put in the soil. So, so right there simply should tell us that you do not have to wonder what's next. Only thing you got to do it is look at what you are doing now. The only thing you got to look at what you did a week ago. The only thing you got to look at what you did a month ago. The only thing you got to look at is what you did three months ago. Matter of fact, it, it may be a year ago. So it's no guesswork in what's next. That's freedom to some of us because some of us are songs we receive. seen. That's alarming to some of us as well. Because now, right now, we're thinking about what we did last week. Right now, we're thinking about what we did last month. Some of us are thinking like, oh my God, I did that last year. Okay. Let's so, so watch this. So, uh, it, it takes the guesswork out of what's next. Like if you if you go to a fast food restaurant and they have the menu, everything is on the menu. A lot of times now they got what's on the sandwich, what's in the chicken box, how many calories. Watch it. I mean, like how many calories they even have on there. If you sow into this number five, this is the price. Watch it. Come out and walk with it. You got you to gotta see this from a spiritual place. Like, if you sold into this number five right here, this is the price that you're going to pay for. That went over some of y'all here. Let me, let me get a little close to you. Whatever you were putting in the soil right now, there's a price that you will pay for. Come on. Hey, listen, that, that doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad thing. A lot of times we say things like that and people want to use it as negative. I've had people tell me that before and I said, well, praise God, because I done sold some good things. I, I hope I do, but I sold. So, so, so it really takes the guesswork out of it. You don't have to worry about what's going to happen tomorrow. You don't have to worry about what's going to happen next week. You don't have to worry about what's going to happen down the line. Simply look at what have I done. Come on. What have I done? What have I done? Three laws of the seed I'm going to give you. Three laws of the seed I want to give you. Four points I'm going to get out the way. The three laws of the seed that I want to give you. The first law is this. The seed within itself. Nope. Yeah, yeah go back to that. So, so here's, here's the first thing you gotta want you gotta understand about the law of the sea, of the law of sowing and reaping. Nobody operates outside of these laws. Not a one. Nobody, nobody operates outside operates outside of the law of the sea. It's simply being that you reap what you sow. Nobody operates outside of that. That's a perpetual law that God put in place. Nobody operates outside of it. So it's as simple as this. Whatever you plant, that's what you will get back. If, if, if you want, if you want good, good things to happen to you, then plant some good seeds. Yes, yes. We, we're not going to go the other way because if y'all want something bad to happen, then we need to have an altar call right now. Okay, all right. So we're going to talk to you so number one, here's what you gotta understand. That the seed within itself. The seed within itself. Simple meaning this. If you go back and study on your time, Genesis 1 and 11, you can write that down. Genesis 1 and 11, you can write that down. 
Whatever, that, whatever you want to know the original intent of something, the Bible uses the term it's called, it's called the law of first mention. The law of first mention is simply this. Whatever you want to know when something originated or the original intent of something, you got to go back to the place where it was first spoken of. If you're reading your Bible in Scripture and you wonder, hey, where did this come from? You go back and search the first place that it was mentioned in the Bible. That's the law of first mention. In Genesis 1, ain't that? This talks about the law of the seed. The seed was in itself. This was Jesus straight. He says that everything will produce after its time. Everything will produce after its time. So what's next? What's next? Whatever I have planned. What's next? Whatever I have planned. So this is what this is what Genesis 1 11 says. It says that the earth brought forth trees with fruit. And the seed was within itself. Watch this. The seed within itself. Get this. The seed within itself, it represents a self-sustaining reproductive system that was created by God. It was simply mean that it was built with the capability to produce, to reproduce indefinitely. It was built with the capability to produce, to reproduce indefinitely. So that's why, that's why sometimes when we get to going through things, and it seems like things just keep happening and keep happening and keep happening because that seed that was planted has the capacity to reproduce indefinitely. 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 That, 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 that the seed will never stop reproducing unless something happens. The seed will never stop reproducing Unless the soul that is sown in it changes. It will never stop reproducing unless the soul that it was planted in is changed. It will never stop. So if you so what does that mean? That you continue to plant in the same soil. You will always reproduce the same result that you've been getting. If you continue to plant chaos in relationships, in homes, you will continue to reproduce the same result that you've been getting. If you, if, on, a, on a better note, if you continue to plant the seed of love, it will continue to produce, produce, produce love. Always. I love, I love the scripture, Deuteronomy 8.18, it says that, it says that, remember the Lord has given each and not every one of us the ability to produce wealth. That, that ought to make somebody happy. Right? Because God has given each and every one of us the ability to produce wealth. So each and every one of us have the ability to produce wealth. So that negates that God don't want me to have this. God don't want me to have that. Because if God didn't want you to have that, he wouldn't have given you the ability to do it. Then my wife was talking, and we were talking about some things, we, we, we were just talking, and we were like, hey, you know what? It, it's okay to have those things. Those things just can't have you. It's okay to have wealth. It's okay to have riches. They just can't have you. So number one, the seed within itself. Number two, Every seed produces after its own time. Every, every seed produces after its own time. I just kind of talked about that just now. I have the ability to reproduce. That's why you see they even make sound like that. 
Ini jati Ini jati Ini jati Ini jati Ini jati Ini jati But every seed produces after its own time. You gotta understand that. that that's why Galatians 6 talks about it says, For whatsoever a man soweth, that he also shall reap. Why? Why would he reap it? Because every seed produces after its time. Every seed. Number three, you always get back more than you plan. You always get back more than you plan. If I you, you give you an example, if I plant an apple seed, I will get an apple tree. If I plant an orange seed, I get an orange tree. I don't get one orange back, I get a whole tree back. So what's the problem? You have to be careful what you plant. You, you gotta be, you gotta be careful what you plan. You gotta be careful what you plan. I love the story of, of Abraham when God tells Abraham that the seed, seed will be blessed. And all the nations will be blessed through you. Perpetual blessing. He said, your seed will be blessed. All the nations shall be blessed through your seed. So when God blesses, God just doesn't give blessings for you. God blesses generationally. Yes. God blesses through generations, through generations, through generations. But, but he was telling you where. And so we, 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 we got to get this word. Just because God is fair and just, he also talked about an exodus in Deuteronomy. He also said that he will give the, the sins of the father to the children, to the third and the fourth generation. So some things you just got to break, maybe not for you, but for your children. Yeah. Come on. Some things you got to break for your children's children. Yeah. Some things you just got to break for your children's children's children. Some things you got to break for your children's 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 children. So, so. And Bible also talks about when he talks about leaving an inheritance. He said you gotta leave an inheritance for your children, too. Uh -huh. So so you gotta understand that some things are not for you. Sometimes you just gotta do it, you know, with father, you just gotta do it for the mind. <laughs> you, 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 gotta, you gotta do it for those generations that's coming behind you. Some things you just gotta break is not for you, but you gotta do it for your children. And you gotta do it for your unborn children's children. So let me go back to my original point. You don't have to worry about what's happening tomorrow. You don't got to worry about happening what's next week. next week. You don't have to worry about what's happening next month. You got to look at what you are doing right now. Whatever, whatever you want to happen next week, whatever you want to happen next month, you just got to focus on your now. Sometimes we look past now to try and get to a place and we just, we, we, we just get on autopilot sometimes. Mm -hmm. And so we just begin to just let life happen and think we have no part in what's happening now. You want, you want to know a result of what's happening now? It's because of the decisions that we made last week, or last month, or last year, or whatever. And we got we to understand, we got we to gotta understand that, that now was what did. Now, now, what's happening now is once did. So we begin to say things, when I get it. Or, 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 I'll start to do that when, when this happens. No, we got to start to say things like, I'm going to do this now because I'm looking for this to happen. Yes. Yes. I'm looking for this to happen. That's the law of the seed. And some of us are saying, I've been planting good seeds, and I'm not getting it. I had an 
I've been planting some good seeds, and I'm not getting a good return on my investment. And I've said this before, so what do you do when you're planting seed, and you know that seed is good, but you're not getting a good return on your investment? There's another law that comes into place. That's the law of the soul. That's the law of the soul. We just talked about those different types of soil. So whenever you are planting, whenever you are loving, whenever you are showing compassion, whenever you are just being nice to that person that just hurts you like, oh, get out. Whatever you are just like, like just sure the love of Christ and somebody on the other side of you is not giving you a bit return on what you are sowing. You got to check the soil on what you're sowing in. You got to check the soil. You got you to gotta check the soil. You got to check the soil. So, so, so here's the turn. Here's the turn. I want to, I want to give to you. There's a turn. It's called, it's, it's called Boots Sola. And this is a, this is a, this is a, this is a really a, a, a citizenship term that the United States and other countries go by. And it says this. It basically says that whatever uh, soil that a that a, a baby is born on, that's the nationality of that child. <laughs> Whatever soil, whatever soil that a baby is born on, whether that's the United States, whether that's Germany, whatever it's overseas, whatever, that's the nationality of that child. I'm going to get real close to that. Whatever soil, we all know what's going on with it. Whatever soil that a child is born on, that's the nationality of that child. Whatever seed you plant in the soil, that will be the result of what you have planted. Whatever seed you put in your soil, that will be the result of your heart. And biblically, biblically, it is. The soil can and will only produce what was put into it. Somebody, somebody gonna get that. The soil can and will only produce what you put into it. So whatever you want, you gotta plant the seed. Whatever you want, you gotta begin to plant that. If you want, if you want unity in your house, you got to begin to plant unity. If you want love in relationship, then you got to begin to plant the seed of love. If you want unity, if you want all of these things in relationship, all these things, you got to begin to plant. That's why the Bible talks about. This is strange. This is strange. But it, it says that whatever area you want blessing in, then you got to begin to plant in that area. Now it's strange to us when we say things like, "I'm believing for a financial blessing," and then the pastor will tell you, "You, you got to plant some seed." That sounds strange, but what am I doing? I'm expecting a financial blessing, so I got to begin to plant. I got to begin to plant a seed of financial blessing so I can get a harvest of financial blessing. I don't know what it is that, that you guys are looking for. Each and every one of us has something that we are expecting or something that we want or something that we desire. And the question has to be raised if you're not getting it. The question has to be raised. What kind of seed are you planting? Some of us say, hey, I want this, I want this, I want this, I want this. And then we have to go back and question, am I planting the right seed? All right, now. Am, am I saying I want an I want a orange, but I done planted an apple seed? All right, now. All right, all right. The Bible declares that a good seed can only produce good fruit. The Bible also goes back and says that a bad tree can only produce bad fruit. Why? Because that's the seed that's in it. It only can produce after its own time. 
That's good. So I'm gonna give you a full point, I'm gonna get out two ways about uh, the season. Number one. And we know that in that parable, the seed that was planted was is the word of God. Number one. The word God gives you will be counted immediately. Immediately or over time. The word that God gives you will immediately be counted over time. The word that God gives you will immediately be counted or over time. I ain't gonna call no names, and you know who I'm talking about. So we was having a conversation a few weeks ago, and somebody was giving me a testimony, and I said, "You're gonna be challenging that area." And like a day or so later, oh my God! So the word that God gives you, you will be challenged in that area immediately, or it will happen over time. So you got so so we have to be so careful about the seed. So 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 what is so so in, in Genesis in Genesis God gives uh, Adam a word. Hey, you can have everything you want. You know you you little G in this garden. You know everything is yours. And then he tells them everything is yours. Just don't touch that tree. And then the serpent that the Bible declares was that the, he was the sharpest out of every out of them. He comes to the woman and he says, Did God really say that? Some of us in here are having that very same moment. And the enemy is asking us, Did God really say that? Right. Did God really say that you were going to be financially blessed? Did God really say you were going to have this amazing marriage? Did God really say you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you? Look at everything that you're going through right now. Look at the lack. Look at the hardships you're going through right now. Did God really say that? And the challenge will come because some of us sometimes are really going through all that. But how many of you know that Isaiah 55, the Bible declares that the word of God, it says, He will never return unto the Lord, that He shall produce the result that He set it out to do. <laughs> whatever, God said, whatever I release out of my mind, He says, my hand is obligated to perform. Come on. Somebody need to get that. God says, God's hand is obligated to perform what His mouth has said. What has he said concerning your situation? And but, but watch this, watch this. God, God then declares it in, in like Matthew 10, he says, now he says, I've given you authority to cast out every unclean spirit. Hey, watch this. What did I say? What did I say? What? No, not that. Not, it's not what I said. This is what the Bible says in Matthew 10 and 1. It says, God has given you and you and you the authority. Yeah, yeah. You. You. He said, I'm, I'm done. I'm turning it over to you. I'm turning the throne over to you. I'm turning the reins over to you. He said, I'm giving you the authority to cast out every unclean spirit. He says, and now you also have authority over every form of sickness and every manner of disease. So, so like they said on that, what's the move to? You got the juice now. You got the juice. So, what are you saying out of your mouth that knowingly or unknowingly that your hand is fulfilled? What are you saying out of your mouth that your hand is obligated to perform? Y'all said, Pastor, you mad at me? No, I want all of us to have that. I want, I, want, I want all of us to be that. And I want to take all the guesswork out of it for you. There's no guessing. We don't have to guess 
like what's up over on the cup number if I do this, what's up on the cup number one? Right. Or what's up on the cup number two? Or what's up if, if I do this, then I wonder can I have cup no, if you do this, this is what you're gonna have. It takes all the guesswork out of it. All, right. all the guesswork. You don't have to wonder. Now now I'm not saying it's gonna happen tomorrow because God is about a process. Yeah. Yeah. All right, all right. He's so number two, what's next depends on your seed and, and your soil. What's next depends on your seed and the soil. What's next depends on your seed and your soil. What seed are you putting in your soil? And you, you, you are that soil if you guys didn't know. You are. Number two. What's next depends on how you handle your now. <laughs> What's next? You don't get anything else. I want you guys to leave me here with this one. What's next depends on how you handle your now. What's next depends on how you handle your now. So whatever you want to happen next, you gotta handle your now. That's what I want to give you this. What's next depends on how well you protect your seed. What's next depends on how well you protect your seed. So let me sum this up. Matthew 4 talks about the parable of the sword. Jesus begins to tell this parable about a uh, farmer who went out and sowed seed. Matthew, uh, Mark 4, verse 59, talks about those, those four different types of sword. Then Jesus comes back in uh, uh, Mark 4, 10, he tells, put the disciples sit down and ask Jesus what that parable means. And in verse 13, he begins to tell them what that parable means. And this is what he says. He says, then he said to them, don't you understand this parable? How then will you understand all of the parables? The sower sows the word. Some are like the word sown on the path. Watch this. He says, when they hear, immediately Satan comes and takes away the word sown in them. Others are like seed sown rocky ground. When they hear the word, Immediately they receive with joy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that sounds good. Yeah, yeah. But I'm going to get the point out because it doesn't stop right there. It says this. It says, but they have no root. Mm -hmm. They are short lived. Mm -hmm. Watch this. When the stress of persecution right. comes because of the word, they immediately fall away. I'll talk about the other two next week because I want to keep this point on this real quick and I'm done. It says, you, you know how it is like when you, when you get this word, like you on fire. You're like, you just ready to yeah, yeah, take yeah. out, run out this building right now and just ready to work on that vision that God told you. Right. And just ready to work in that word that God gave you on today. And then life happens. I, you guys heard me say this before. Mike Tyson says this. He says, he says everybody had a plan. He said, until I punched him in the face. He says, everybody that got in the ring with me had a plan until I punched them in the face. That's what life does. Life says, you know, we, we take off running real fast. Like, oh my God, I'm going to start this business. I'm going to do this. I'm going to marry her. This is going to be the best time ever. And then, like, you didn't, you didn't know she had all that came with her. You didn't know all that came with him. And then you begin to say things like, maybe he won the right way. Maybe God made a mistake. Maybe God did not say that. Because life happens. Just 
because we go through challenges, just because the stress is calm, just because persecution calm, because of that word, doesn't mean God didn't say it. It simply means that what are you doing to water that seed? What are you doing to water that seed? What are you doing to protect that seed? So God, I said you wanted to say this, and you don't need to say nothing else. Yeah. What happened next depends on what you're doing now. What happened next depends on what you did last week. What happened next depends on what you did last month. What happened next depends on what you did last year. It takes all the guesswork out of it all. So if you want great things to happen, then plant some great seeds. Amen? Amen. 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 Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, we thank you for who you are. Thank you for Jesus Christ. Lord God, thank you for everything that Jesus did. Thank you, Lord God, that he died a death that he did not deserve to pay a debt that we could not pay. Lord God, thank you that he stripped himself of his righteousness to close our unrighteousness, Lord God. Father, I thank you that we should plant good seeds, seeds to fall on good ground. It produced 30, 60, and saw a hundred times, Lord God. Father, thank you that the thing that we're expecting from you, we will begin to plant it now, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, that you, your word cannot return unto you, Lord. Thank you, Lord God, that we plant seeds on the day, even in this week that will produce good fruit, a fruit that remains, oh God. And so, Father, we thank you and we bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. 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 At this time, I also just want to give an invitation whether you're in here or whether you are online right now worshiping with us that the seed of Jesus Christ and His Holy Spirit has not been planted in your heart. If you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, I would love to pray with you. If that's you, I would love to pray with you. If you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, I would love to pray with you. If you are thinking about it, then that is you. If you have any doubt or not sure, then it's you. If you are in a situation where you would want walking with God and you would want to pray, I want to pray with you as well. So let's pray this prayer. Lord God, Lord God your word declares, if I confess with my mouth, that Jesus is Lord, and believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead, I will be saved. Thank you, Lord, for forgiving me of my sins. The old has gone, and I'm a new creation. In Jesus' name. Hey. Amen, amen, amen. If you pray that prayer, welcome to the very own family of God. Whether you're here or whether you pray that prayer online, type in the comment box, I just accepted Jesus. Amen. We celebrate with you. The Bible declares that the angels are rejoicing when one gives his life to the Lord. Amen. Amen, amen. And maybe somebody that's watching also or even here that want to be a part of this local ministry with an international reach. If that's you, raise your hand. If that's you, or if you are here and you want to be part of this local ministry, raise your hand. And if you're online, you can join our MOCI Nation. It doesn't matter where you are. You can be all the way on the other side of the world. You can be a part of this local ministry with the International Week. You can do that by texting NATION to 205-649-3232. Text the word NATION to 205-649-3232. Amen. All right, guys. I'm absolutely excited about what God is doing. I'm excited about the great seed that all of us are going to be planted. Amen. Amen. God is blessed. Yes. yes. Amen. Yeah. If y'all get one, at least one nugget out of that right there. Yeah. How many of you guys are going to plant some good seeds? How many of you guys are going to plant some good seeds? Come on. Okay, I got one in the back. Amen. I think that's that one. Yeah. We'll yeah. take it. Amen. Yeah. God. I want you to understand, and I, I, I don't understand it as well, that everything we do, every, all 24 hours in a day, all 1,440 minutes, 
All 86,677 days. Makes a difference. Let me see you count. Let me set the count. Get all count. Because it's a seed that's in the song. It's a seed that's in the song. Whether it's in fault or in deed. There's a seed. Let's make it count. Let's make it count. Can we do that? Yes. I'm asking you. I'm asking you. Can we make it count? Let's make our seed count. Amen? Amen. Amen.